Okay, so let's have a look then at uh, distance vector routing. So in this approach to, um, uh, to computing the costs of uh, the different routes, the different paths to different nodes, um, each node constructs a vector that contains the, um, the distances, the costs, uh, is really what we mean there uh, by the distance, to all other uh, nodes in the network, and then that shares that around with its immediate neighbors. Uh, and then they in turn share that around and so this, of course, assumes that each node uh, can tell the cost of each link to its directly connected neighbors. So that might be, for example, like a very common approach is where the cost is inversely proportional to the speed. Uh, so, for example, gigabit Ethernet might be given a cost of 1. Uh, 100 megabit Ethernet might be given a cost of 10, uh, for example. And so, uh, you know, the cost, if you like, can effectively be, uh, you know, related to what the, uh, the maximum speed is is uh, that's attainable over the link. So if we have a look at this example, um, from a starting point, each node can work out whether it can, uh, you know, whether it has a zero cost, i.e. Uh, to get to itself. So A has a cost of zero to reach A, um, or where it has direct neighbors. So A has direct neighbors of B, C, E, and F. So B, C, E, and F, uh, in this case, are given a cost of one. So we're assuming that all of the, um, the links have a cost of one uh, for each single hop. Um, it doesn't know how to get to D and G. So it says it has an infinite cost to D and G. Um, B, in comparison, only has direct links to A and C. Of course, it has a cost of zero to itself. B and, uh, A and C, cost of one. Uh, for the others, the cost is infinite. Uh, for C, of course, that can get to A, B, and D directly. So A, uh, A, B, and D have a cost of one. The cost to itself is zero, of course. Uh, the cost to everything else is infinite. And so we can repeat this process all the way through. And so G, well, you know, E at the extreme end only has a link to A, right? So E has a cost of one to A, infinite cost to everything except for the zero cost to itself. Um, so of course, each of the nodes doesn't have all of this information initially. This is just us looking in from the outside saying, this is the information that A will have. This is the information that B will have. This is the information that C will have. This is the information that D will have and so on. So each node, only knows its slice of this table, its vector uh, in this uh, two-dimensional table. So for the, the routing uh, table for node A then will be something like this uh, initially again, right? So the destination of B, which is directly connected, has a cost of one, and the next hop is B. Indeed, at the moment, it's only direct links. So the next hop and the destinations are all the same for those where there is a, uh, a route there. Those which have no route, we have no known next hop and the cost is infinite. Uh, so at this point, A knows how to get to B, C, E, and F. Um, but if it combines the information from the other nodes, so for example, from F, it will hear that F can get to G with a cost of one. A knows the cost to get to F is one, so it will add one to the cost that F reports to get to G, that makes two. So the cost to get to G is two, and the uh, the next hop is F, because it got that information from F. So where the information is coming in is actually informing um, A about the path to get somewhere. So if this is repeated again across uh, every node, uh, we'll end up with a, a routing table that looks something like this, where, uh, again, if we compare that back, uh, to the original, all the costs of zero and one are the same. These infinities though have been progressively replaced with accurate values. So the cost uh, to get to D is two via C because it's the shortest path. It doesn't have to come around the long way around here or the long way around there because um, it will have heard from C that C has a cost of one to get to D. It will have added that uh, to get two and used that in favor of for example, if it had heard from B, uh, you know, so, well, so B would also hear from C that it can get to D in one there. So it would be a cost of two to B. So B, A would hear from B, oh, I have a cost of two to get to D. Add one more would be a cost of three. Um, A would say to itself, no, 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 no. I'm not going to use that because I know I can get to D at a cost of one more than the cost of getting to C, which will only be a cost of two. So again, this is updated through all the table. So you can pick any kind of, value out, right? So for E to get to D, um, it has a cost of three, and we can work out what that shortest route would be. It's to A, to C, to D. Um, so it will find 
according to the cost metric, uh, the optimal path uh, to get everywhere. Uh, and so this algorithm is sometimes called the, uh, the Bellman Ford algorithm. And so every, uh, some period, so every T seconds, each router will send this updated version of its information to each neighbor. And each neighbor will then look at that information to see whether it can improve on any of the, uh, the routes that it has. Uh, so one of the quite well-known problems uh, with a distance vector routing scheme is that it responds to good news very quickly, but very slowly to bad news. And what we mean by this uh, is that uh, if it hears from a neighbor that there's an improved path to get somewhere, it will immediately update its route uh, to do that. But bad news, in effect, is an, it's a negative. It's not actually positively communicated. And so it has to be inferred. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a, a couple of slides. Also, it's, it's quite a chatty uh, protocol in that the size of the vector at each node is proportional to the size of the network. Uh, and the amount of traffic for these messages going around, uh, so you've got N nodes with uh, data proportional to N, the overall amount of traffic is actually N squared. So it doesn't scale uh, particularly well. Um, so let's try and understand this problem with the bad news uh, traveling slowly. So let's say that F uh, detects that the link to G has failed. So F sets a distance to G to infinity uh, and it sends that to A. Um, A will set the distance to G to infinity because it uses F to get uh, to G. Um, A at some point later will receive an update from C saying it has a two, uh, two hop path, uh, a cost of two to get to G. And so then I will go, okay, well then I can get to G in three hops via C and will update uh, its route uh, to get there. Uh, and so um, F will then in turn, uh, by the same process, realize that it can get to G in four hops. So there's been a number of messages that have had to go through to realize what the alternate uh, path is uh, to get to G uh, from F. And it gets a little bit worse than that. Let's imagine that the link from A to E goes down, right? So this is the link from here to here. Um, in the next round of updates, so A is going to set its distance to infinity to E. This is all fine. Um, B and C, meanwhile, are still advertising a cost of two to E because they think they can go back via A to get to E. And now we have some race conditions happening. So if B hears that E can get uh, uh, be reached in two hops from C, it will conclude that um, so B will think that B can get there in three hops. Uh, and it advertises this to A. Um, A will go, oh, okay, so three plus one is four. I can get there in four hops and advertises this to its neighbors. So C hears that. And so C concludes that it can reach in five hops. Uh, and so this keeps on going. <laughs> the, the estimated path distance keeps counting up to infinity. And so this is the count to infinity problem. And we will look at that in the next video.